Welcome to the How to DIY Year-Round Maintenance video. In this video, we're going to look at a number of tasks that should be completed around the home throughout the year. To begin with, we're going to take a look at loft and pipe lagging. When lagging a loft, it's important to wear protective clothing, that's to say gloves, masks, goggles, and overalls. The reason for this is that the lagging is made up of glass wool, and it can be very irritating when it comes into contact with the skin. Carefully roll the lagging in between the loft timbers, taking care not to tread on the supported plaster ceilings. Cut off lengths as required using a sharp knife. Continue to work across the loft space. A space should be left around the outside of the loft to allow for air circulation. It's advisable to discard the protective clothing when you've finished as it will be contaminated with the glass fibers. All exposed pipework should also be lagged, especially in garages, as they are prone to freezing during the winter months. Lagging is now readily available to suit different pipe diameters. It's a very simple process, as it usually comes pre-split along the length. Simply cut to size with a junior hacksaw and position over the exposed pipework. Make sure the lagging is fitted properly around the pipes, leaving service and drain-off valves visible. When fitting the lagging around junctions, cut out pieces to get a good fit, as shown here. To put a longer length on, run the hacksaw blade down the split, open up the end and slide on to the pipework. Fitting a service valve. We recommend fitting service valves to all water-fed appliances. This will enable you to isolate any of the appliances should you need to carry out any work. Eliminating the need to drain down your cold water system. Here we're fitting a service valve to an outside tap. Begin by turning off the incoming water supply at the stop tap. Turn on the tap to drain down any water in the pipes. If there's a drain-off valve nearby, open this as well. Mark the position of the valve on the pipe. Remove the tap from the wall. Now cut this section of pipe out with a pipe slice or hacksaw. As with all compression fittings, a sealant paste is required. Take the valve apart, place the nut and ring over the pipe. Apply a quantity of sealant paste over the end of the pipe, as shown. Assemble to fitting and hand tighten. Repeat this process with the other side of the fitting and pipe. Reassemble, making sure the isolation screw is facing outwards for easy access.
Refit the tap back to the wall. Tighten the fitting with two sets of grips or spanners. Turn the water supply back on and check the valve functions correctly. Cleaning a sink trap. This is something that should be done on a regular basis as a buildup of debris is inevitable. Remove the sink trap by unscrewing the knurled plastic nut. Empty the contents into a bowl. Always replace the rubber washer before refitting. Replace and tighten the nut by hand. Stop tap repairs. A common fault with most stop taps is a leaking gland. Begin by removing the gland behind the stop tap Twist a length of PTFE tape together to form a strand. Wrap this around the exposed shaft behind the thread. Replace the gland and tighten with a pair of grips. Remove the excess tape and turn the supply back on. Regrouting and sealing. Over a period of time, the grout in between ceramic tiles becomes stained and dirty, especially where a lot of water comes into contact with it, for example, kitchens, bathrooms, and showers. Remove the old grout with a regrouting tool. Remove two or three millimeters. Brush off all the dust from the tiles and the surfaces. Always wear rubber gloves before starting to grout. Spread the grout with your applicator, making sure all the gaps are filled. Fill in any screw holes that are no longer required. After completing, wipe over with a damp sponge. And finally, wipe over with a lint-free cloth. It's always advisable to seal the tiles where they meet work surfaces, etc. Apply a length of masking tape along the surface, three or four millimeters away from the wall masking off any returns. Put the tape onto the vertical face of the tile, again three or four millimeters away from the work surfaces. Once the entire area has been masked off, Run a bead of silicon between the two pieces of tape.
run a dampened plastic spatula along the silicon bead to form a V. Leave the silicon to form a skin, then remove the masking tape. A neat, perfect seal has now been achieved. Repointing. Severe weather conditions causes old mortar to crumble, which becomes porous. If this happens, it will require repointing. Remove any loose mortar with the point of your pointing trowel. Dampen down the wall with water to avoid quick drying out. Use small amounts of mortar on your pointing trowel and position carefully between the bricks. Take care not to get mortar on the brick faces. Apply mortar in small amounts in between the vertical joints to begin with. After the vertical joints have been repointed, start on the horizontal joints. You might want to practice the pointing up procedure in a small inconspicuous area before attempting a large prominent area. Remove any excess with the edge of the trowel. Repairing lead work. It's important to check that the lead work is secure here you can see that this step flashing is away from the wall. Reposition the lead back into place and make sure it's tucked well into the joint. A lead wedge can be made to secure the step flashing back into the joint. Cut a strip about 20 millimeters wide. Tightly roll it up together. Cut off slightly oversized compared with the brickwork joint. Remove any excess. Now flatten down one side to form a wedge shape. Firmly place in between the bricks and lead flashing. Hammer it in firmly. The edge of a chisel can be used. Firm down the lead. We would suggest repointing the gap in between the bricks at this stage. Replacing roof tiles. If a roof tile appears to be cracked or broken, it's essential to replace it immediately, as water can penetrate through into the roof. You'll find that tiles are only nailed to the laths about every fourth row. Therefore, it makes replacing tiles very easy. Lift the tiles above the tile to be replaced. Twist around and remove the broken tile. Replace this and reposition the other tiles. Making sure all are secure. Here you can see how the tile hooks over the lath with these lugs towards the back of the tile. 
Cleaning an air brake. Air brakes are an essential part of any building, allowing air to pass underneath the suspended floor. These should never be blocked up, as without any airflow, timber rot can set in. Remove any buildup of debris or cobwebs with a garden cane, making sure there are no blockages. Checking windows. Underneath most window frames is a routed drip throat. Unlike this example, make sure that they're never blocked or obstructed. Rainwater can cause serious damage. If the throats are blocked, the rainwater will run back towards the brickwork and cause damp patches to appear on internal walls. If cable, usually aerials, go through a door or window frame, ensure there's a drop loop before it enters the timber so as not to let water run along it and into the brickwork. Hinge maintenance. A common fault with decorated doors is that the hinges get clogged up after years of redecorating. Rub glass or sandpaper along the moving parts of the hinge. Then use a good quality oil to lubricate the hinge. Work the door back and forth to spread the oil evenly. Cleaning a gully. Gullies can get blocked up with garden rubbish. Remove the cover, always remembering to wear rubber gloves. Take out any rubbish. This should be done on a frequent basis. Cleaning gutters. Gutters tend to get blocked up during and after autumn. Remove any leaves or rubbish that have built up over a period of time. There are various products available that help prevent small leaves or pine needles getting into the gutters. If you do not take out any preventative care, the downpipes can become blocked. Handy hints. T-pieces can be fitted to all overflow pipes, for example, toilets and tanks. This will prevent any cold winds blowing up the pipes and freezing the water. On the top of soil and vent pipes, a birdcage can be fitted. Check and remove any growths appearing in gutters and chimneys. We would recommend fitting toughened glass in all low-level doors or windows. After frequent use, lime scale can block your shower head, reducing the water flow. By removing the shower head and scrubbing with a small brush, ideally an old toothbrush, this is best done under a running tap. Make sure all holes are free from lime buildup. Replace the shower head and check. Cleaning your washing machine filter should be carried out frequently. Locate your filter. In this case, it's situated at the front of the machine. Remove the panel and unscrew the filter. Take out any clothing fluff or debris. Replace the filter, making sure it's screwed up tightly. Occasionally, central heating pumps can stick, especially after summer. Remove the center screw and manually rotate with a screwdriver. Replace the cover and test. 
Oh, always remember to isolate the power supply before you attempt this procedure. Changing tap washers. Dripping taps can generally be cured by replacing washers rather than changing the taps. Isolate the hot and cold water supply. Remove the tap head. The washer housing can now be removed with a spanner. Simply loosen and remove. Don't be concerned if a small amount of water is retained in the tap housing. This is quite normal. There are many different sizes of washer available. Make sure you obtain the correct one. Remove the old washer and replace with the new one. Now reassemble the tap. Turn on the hot and cold supplies and check. Glazing. Here we're going to glaze a new door. However, the process is exactly the same for reglazing. You'll find that putty is very oily. To remove the excess oil, empty the putty onto a piece of newspaper. Smooth it out with a putty knife. The newspaper will absorb some of the oil. Peel the putty from the newspaper. Break a small piece away and roll it into a ball. This can now be spread across the rebate in the door, using your thumb to spread it evenly. Now before you handle the glass, wear protective gloves. Insert the glass into the aperture, pressing firmly around the edges. Secure the glass with a few pins around the edge. Now put more putty onto the outside of the glass. Once this is completed, use the edge of your putty knife to smooth over. Removing the excess. Slight tidying up may be required. Gently smooth over with your fingertips. Leave it to dry completely before you attempt to decorate. Radiator valve repairs. Frequently turning radiator valves on and off can result in the gland weeping. Remove the cap and retighten the gland with a pair of adjustable grips. Wipe off any water and replace the cap. Open and close the valve making sure it's not too stiff.